The first one is really crucial about soft and hard. Remember uh, yesterday we talked about that just like in English you have distinction between long and short vowels, big difference, right? In pronunciation and uh, meaning of the words. In Russia we have similar things with a soft and hard consonant. That word, most of the consonant could be in the position of the soft and hard. And I give you an example in your language with the letter N, right? Remember? So just to demonstrate one more time for people who came and again, so it could be like uh, here or we're talking about this M, right? So this is a consonant in English and it's pronounced not or onion. So where is the hard and where is the soft one? Hard and onion is soft. In Russian we call uh, that's, so this consonant could be non-palatalized or palatalized, or hard and soft, doesn't matter how you call it. You just see it in the textbook, they call it palatalization of the consonant means soften that. Because when you uh, pronounce them here with a hard consonant, your, uh, um, t, uh, your tongue is pressing against the t from t, right? It's like not. not. And in Russian, the same thing, like Natasha. Natasha. Na Natasha. Natasha. But when you pronounce this one, onion, you notice that you, uh, your uh, tongue is curving toward the palate of your soft upper ridge gum, right? Like onion. Not an onion. And that's what makes it soft. That's why they call it soft consonant or palate lies consonant, whatever you call it. Okay? And it's the same thing in Russian, for instance. Uh, let's see with that, that example. That could be true, but the word, that word, that name. Natasha, Nina. Nina, see the difference? Natasha, Nina. Do you understand what it is about, right? Okay, now, so most of the consonant, like N, would be very easier for you to hear, to imitate, to uh, this one. Some of them not so hard. Now, when do we have it? Can you guess why in English that occurs? Uh, yeah. Good, so there's some, some vowels. This one, does it do anything for you in this one? No. In Russia, strict, clear, simple, relatively simple rule. Some vowels do nothing, by itself consonants do nothing, in the end nothing, but with some vowels, and of course with what else? The other letter. The figure yesterday with is meh, is not with soft side. And it's only, um, well, you could actually, why do I have to write it down? If you open the textbook on the page 12, uh, and if you don't have a uh, text, uh, text, I could give you a handout about the same thing. Book, you have a book, but here. Yeah. Yeah, do you have it? talking about them. Make it brief. Uh, and uh, also there's a chart I gave you. So they say all of this, this, this symbol in your book or whatever means nothing for the consonant. So it means that if the consonant by itself in the end or whatever, in the alphabetical, it means it's hard. Some other vowel are or, or, or other consonant do nothing. But soft sign or the following vowels Okay, can you see them in the book? Ya, your, u, e, and e make preceding consonants soft. Okay? So in other words, it's only six letters you need to know. Five vowels and soft sign. That's all. When you see them, it's automatically soft. You hear it or not. You could say it or not. You need to know. Because this is whole grammar based on that soft ending of 
are getting in the Holy Ghost. Okay, so this is extremely important role. Understanding for pronunciation and for the grammar. Save you a lot of trouble if you understand that concept. Okay, okay so those are the words. You see, soft sign plus what vowels you could tell me. One more time. Yeah. Yeah, what else? Yo. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what else? You. You and? E. E. Okay. Right. So only six letters, five vowels. Okay? Just like in English, it's here. But again, in English, there's no consistency. <laughs> could be this, could be not, could be hard. And it's not important in general. In Russia, it's very clear. So you see all of this. Then the, any consonant and... Or R, or S, or K, or any other one must be soft. In the beginning, not all of them you would hear well. But you need to be trained and you would hear, but you should know that. Okay? For example, if you have N and soft sign, if you see N, E, E, if you see N and Y, Y. It's always soft. Any other one doesn't do it. Okay. Now, a little bit maybe political. So basically, E and soft sign, it's you just attach to that, right? Yeah. F, S, or C, E, 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 etc. Right? E versus da. Now, uh, this, uh, you remember I told you we have uh, no diphthong, but there's a few vowels, like four vowels have a little bit semi diphthong, one and a half sound. So they pronounce like ya, remember? Ya, bo, ye, and this one kind of. Well, why don't we do it with the ikranka? Yeah, why don't we need to do that in the English way? So we can do it that. This is better, yeah? Ah. So we have that kind of gliding sound attached to that. Yeah. Oops. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And. So this four have that kind of semi consonant. In the if they are in the alphabet, if they are in the beginning of the word, and if they are with the other vowels, for instance, you have ye, which is not too too often because Russia we love cluster of the consonant, <laughs> but we don't like vowels together too much. Once in a while we have. It's not like our man's language, which is seeming like Italian one. Russia will like all of this consonant cluster. Actually, in the poetry, uh, uh, a lot of poets play in that. Just like in Italian, they do it very melodic one. In Russian, use a consonant to imitate the rustle of the leaves in the forest or the um, sounds of the sea, or things like that with a consonant. Okay. Anyway, so, but, but whenever they come with their two vowels together, then you pronounce it full. Right? Like this one. Ya, yo, ye, you. However, if they are in front, uh, if they are after the consonant, they kind of lose that uh, gliding sound. Okay? And they pronounce like only this. So this word, this half sound embedded in the preceding consonant make it soft. So we don't say uh, for example, nya, we say nya, nyo, nya, nyu. Okay? That's how it works. But this, basically, this uh, four consonants, they have a pair, like a, ah, nya. But a ah doesn't do anything with the other. Okay? This one, o, yo, e, ye, and u. 
au four, semi diphtong one E and soft sign. All right, we can practice a little bit, but I'll show you an example, of course. For example, let's see, well, what we get with the E, right, Nina. Uh, The M. So how do, where is the, uh, is this consonant hard or soft? Huh. According to what, it, you could look at that letters in the range. Hard, because the R doesn't do anything. What about this one? Hard, because it's R, right? Now, what about this one? Soft, right? Because Ya, and this. What about this one? Prove it. Tell me. Why? <laughs> if you say it's soft, you have to prove it. Give me one of those letters would make it soft. It's like O. Yo would make it soft. Does O make it soft? No. No? No. That's, a, that's why I say you don't even have to see that whole chart. You just memorize all of this. Okay? So that's why we pronounce this one Mama, which I could have my and this one Nyasa. We don't have full ya, but we say nyasa. But if it's in the beginning of the word letter ya, then we would say yashi. Right? You remember that example? Bokubadesh, uh, right? Like, what drove? So we don't say yashi or ya right? by itself or something like that. Or ya or whatever if you have that different vowels. But with the consonant, it makes preceding consonant soft and lose that yet sound. So we don't say nyasa, we say nyasa. You hear the difference? Nyasa. Uh, Natasha versus Nina. Or, let's see the other M. Nota, note, versus. How do you say that one? Yeah. Yeah. We don't say yet, because this one, right? We don't have this one, we lose kind of the yeah. So it's just one sound remains. So in other words, these four vowels could be one sound on one of the half. When they are losing that, usually they soften the preceding consonant. Did so you hear that yeah? Yeah, right? Versus uh, nota, right? Or Natasha or Nasha, or any other one, right? Is this hard or soft? Hard. What about this one? Hard. Yeah. <coughs> hard or soft? Why? Prove it. Yo. Yo, exactly. That's all. It's very simple. It's only these letters. Right? So we don't say mo or ma or harpa, but this is the hardest, some of the hard letter for you to, uh, or sounds hard to imitate if you hear like that. M, ra, la. But it would say mio. 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 Honey, honey, right? That's what it sounds like, the so soft word. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, like letter na or maybe de or ve, well, na is really easy for you. The other second uh, group of de, ve, bilabel sound would be somewhat easy, somewhat easier. And the hardest one for, uh, um, I think for foreigners would be uh, letters like ra, L, ma, especially L, because in the European L always hard. It never could be in a position of soft. So, but in Russian we do. For example, we have um, like your name. Hold on, that's a good example too. But I already said a different letter. How do you pronounce this one? Uja, right? So, and this one is hard because of the U doesn't do anything. Uh, 
Okay, first of all, tell me, is this one hard or soft? Soft. Why? You, exactly. What about B? Hard. Hard. Good. Because of what? Oh. None of this. Okay. And what about B? Soft. Soft. Why? Hard. Soft side. Right. So we said you would. You would. This one, Lutra or Lanza. This one, you would. Anybody you know what's the boy? Love. Love is soft, right? So you do boy. So, but again, it's very hard to hear from you the difference, right? Who versus you. And final sometimes too. Du boy. Is that like the lady's name? Yes. So, so we have Nadezhda, Vera, Lubov, three um, Russian names, which is uh, love. Faith and hope. Yeah, they mean that, but also it's a yeah. What's yeah. the first word mean? Uh, is puddle. Mm -hmm. But I just demonstrate uh, L and different pitch. Okay. U, U, N. And again, when L in the final position, that's even hard. So, so be aware of that. Don't get frustrated. Oh, I can hear it. What she explained us, I don't hear it. Well, it's normal. I don't hear your long and short vowels. Well, I kind of hear it. Because I train to say, you know, beaches, but not, you know, whatever. <laughs> like I told you. <laughs> many, many funny things happen with the immigrants, you know, like <laughs> this one and the other one. As far as pronunciation. What other one? E is always there, yeah, your idea. Okay, yeah, my name, by the way. Yeah, so there is a full name. Oh, let's do it both. Oh. So how do you pronounce this one? Yeah, that's why I transliterated like this one in English, right? And uh, syllabus, whatever it is. So because it's by itself or in the beginning of the but how do you pronounce this one? Yeah, you lose that yet sound. Elena. Or nickname. It wouldn't be Elena. It would be Elena. Yeah. And the full name of course. The second L is subject to that. Is it Lena or Lena? Lena. Well, you could say Elena. Full name or Lena, but either one, the second L is soft. And the first one, you know, I mean, second L. Uh, 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 L is soft, I'm sorry, but Ye here is pronounced like in the beginning of the word, right? Like Ye, because it doesn't affect anything. And this one is to affect L. Okay, so either both soft, right? Lena or Lena. But not Lena. Right? You don't have that, you know, gliding sound. Lena. But L is harder, yeah. especially in the hand. Tell me which one is this hard or soft? What about this one? Soft white. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about this M? Soft. Why? Soft. Soft. Why? What about K? Soft. 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 Because why? E. E. And so we don't say malinki, but we say malinki. Malinki. Well, um, I gave you that example before, but this could be one more. So this one, corn, means somebody's turn. Coin is a horse. So N is easier to hear in the N for you. But other, you know, other, like for instance, this one would be very hard. I have a question. It might not exist, but if, if you were to say that word without the soft sign there, could you say it so that we could hear the difference? Sure. Well, that's a good example. Okay. okay. Uh, is this hard or soft? 
Fuck. Well, I oh. soft prove it, oh, and I believe you. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the soft sign. Ma, a, t no, I'm asking about letter M. Oh. Hard or soft? Hard. Hard. What about T? Yeah. Soft. Why? Soft. soft sign. So this is a letter which is not too hard, not too, too easy. So, mm -hmm. mat means the swear words. <laughs> no. Well, it doesn't mean swear words, it means swear words as a, as a group. Mat. Mat. Or it could be uh, che checkmate. checkmate. Checkmate as yeah. well. So, yeah. mat. mat. Right? So, you no know, soft and calm. Mat. Mat. You see the t? Mat is a mama. Mat. Mama, Atiet, Papa. So Mat is a mama. Can you hear that, Mat? Uh, I warned that the final one. Okay, Mat, Mat, Mat. In the final position would be harder, especially some letters. I picked up the okay one, not the easiest one, not the hardest. So because L would be harder and. Some you know, this one somewhat. Uh, so what you could try to do if you want to practice in a final position, put the letter E after the T. Can you see T? T, T. Now remove the letter vowel uh, sound E. Remove E. T. That's what the, you know, the So E would be the best way to practice. Um, for the soft side and for that. But you'll practice, you have plenty of uh, written things, oral exercise, oral sound. Okay, any questions about that pronunciational rule? Because this is extremely important. Okay. Pronunciation, uh, you know, you pronounce it better, not like with a heavy accent. Meaning of the words like math and maths, right, and many other ones, uh, plus the whole grammar based on that concept. Okay. 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 Soft sign, ya, yo, e, u, and that's it. When you see them, automatically you know that. Even if you make mistake, whatever, there's a few concepts always hard, always soft, isn't it? It's for Russians. Because you learn one rule, they learn the other one. They don't need to learn this one, but they need some other one. So, this is very important. Okay, let's see. Actually, I gave you that handout. We could practice a little bit to pronounce if you want to. Uh, we have it here also in the textbook, but we could try. I could, I could give you one. You have a textbook, right? Okay, well. <coughs> Did I give it to you? Can you just share this one? Because you don't really need to do that, to, to have it, but you have that one? Okay. You have a book? I have a book. Okay. You can share one of these. Okay. Oh, you, share have this one. One. you have one? Yeah, yeah. 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 You could have one. Oh, right. I right. have enough. Yeah. 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 I have one extra. Yeah. Anybody yeah. want? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Let's practice here since we have oh, okay, good. Anybody want extra? Sit vertically, right? Uh -huh. Two, 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 two. two. And last one, T. 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 T means you, T is something else, right? Okay. Okay, that one there. It's relatively easy as this letter, right? Da. 
Ja. Ja. Då. Då. Jo. Jo. Det. 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 Du. 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 No. First one, du. The other one, du. 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 Make it soft. Du. Du. I feel like. Is my mouth kind of like going like that a little bit? No. It's more like the tongue curved toward the soft palate. Okay, so that's why it's like you pronounce like um, music or onion. That's what it is. So let's say, okay, do, 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 do. Okay, better. D, 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 D. Okay, try to do the M. It's, it should be easier for you to do that. So first pair. Can you try? Mm -hmm. Na, uh -huh. ya. Yeah. Okay, Jaime, you want to try next one? Next pair. No. Mm -hmm. uh, no, this one. No and... No. Good pair. Good pair. Eh. Wow, eh. Yeah, that's a good mistake, actually. Don't to confuse letter E. Eh. And let it Z, okay? Because this is vowels, this is consonant. That's straight. Mm -hmm. And the other one? Yeah. Okay, one is ne, it's correct. What about the other one? With the yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you say it again? Ne. Yeah. Ne. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, ne, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot easier with the N. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, it's supposed to be him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one more time. More. 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 Uh huh. More. More. Skip the me. Huh? More. Skip the me. Skip the me. Okay. More. 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 Bo, bo, bio, 
Bad. 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 Well, you don't understand the idea, right? And also, I put uses some of the vowels always hard or soft regardless. But that's not really of your concern, even if you say, oh, it is soft or it is soft. Okay, so this is the main thing is here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, any questions about that rules? Again, you don't have to immediately hear it or imitate it, but you should be able to know. So what we'll have it on uh, next week on Tuesday uh, it will be a real, a real short quiz, like 15 minutes. One is writing all letters in alphabetical order. You already know all of them, but now you have to learn them in order. Because you need to use the dictionary, right? So 33 in alphabetical order. Well, that's why you have a wiki. Mm -hmm. And the second part, uh, I'm going to use not you write the rule, but you would apply the rule. In other words, I give you the string of words, like five or three. And for number 15, you have to circle or underline only soft ones. Okay? So not vowels or anything, soft consonants. For example, none. So you skip it. Or all or one. Okay? So here is only one. So you circle them and I underline. You need to apply that rule. Okay, then Tuesday. Okay, any question about this one because it's extremely important. This rule, the other one just pronunciation wise, this one for many things. Any questions? Okay. So, you have it also in the page 11, 12, you know, this explanation and examples and everything. We'll practice tomorrow, so after you hold a little bit, visualize it. Okay. And one, uh, one more thing about consonant, that's a rule, phonetical rule, but it's not so crucial, but it's important for pronunciation. It's also here in that page. And that rule is, do we have time? Okay, any more questions about this one? What consonant the soft when um, which vowel make consonants vowel or what letter make consonants soft? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. good. What else? Yeah. Your. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. you. you and E. And you forgot one more letter. Soft, soft, soft sign. sign. <laughs> you already know that word. So you see them? Alright, so. Second one about consonant, nothing to do with this rule or any other one, and not, not related. Okay, so uh, this one, uh, in uh, any languages, including English, you have a, um, uh, letters with a voice you pronounce, like obviously vowels with a voice, right? Because you use a vocal cord, right? Ah, or oh, there with a voice. Also consonant with a voice, right? Like G. You're using voice, right? The, the, the same in Russian. Of course, all the vowels are the, the voice and consonant with the voice, and also in English and in Russian, we have consonant without voice. For example, k, s. Do you use a voice in English? No, and in Russian as well. K, ch, s. Believe me, put your hands over here and say. Good. Yeah. Good. Do you see it's vibrating? <laughs> ah, vibrating. Now say s. Is it vibrating? Now put it well, like this one, because the vocal cord is here. Is it vibrating? A little. Not really. It's not really vibrating. Like s. Yes. It's because you're changing vibrate. the sound, but if you don't change the sound, it doesn't. Work. So, so they call voiceless consonant and with voice or without voice in English and Russian. 
Why it's so important in Russian to know? Uh, I'm not going to write it for you. I think you also have it in the book. I believe, yeah, page 15. So, we have uh, uh, pairs of six pairs of the consonants where they have the same origin. Well, in English you have it too. So, it's a similar thing, similar concept. Why we need to know that in Russia, I'll explain to you in a minute. Okay, so on page 15, you have six pairs, right? Of like, <clears throat> with a voice consonant, like V. Right? Now, what's a counter pair of the V without voice? If you remove the voice, what do you have? It's written there. <laughs> exactly, what it, that's what it is there. Now, Z. S. Exactly. Z. So there is the same origin, but one is using voice, the other one is not using voice. Some other one like L, M, then no pair. But this six family pairs. So V, F, Z, S, Z, Z, B, what's it? Exactly. G, K, and D. So why do we need to know these pairs in Russian? Okay, so you, you have it in English too, right? And some of the vowels always uh, without voice or with the voice, but that's very is important. Because in Russia we have a rule. When you pronounce, if you have a word like um, um, for example, so uh, the final one, uh, is it voiced or voiceless consonant? Voiceless. Voiceless, right? So if you see the voiceless and this one, the way it's spelled, the way it's pronounced, no problem. However, if you see any of the top one, count a pair of this one in the end, for example. Is it, but with a voice or without? Voice with. Voice with. What's count a pair of but? Look over there. So we never pronounce it like a voice. We pronounce like a pet. We don't say do, but we say doop. Mm -hmm. Zoop. That's right. Okay. Go to T. Of course. That's what they have. Zoop, doop. So what is that? Is the final one voice or voiceless? Like voice. Voice. Okay. But do we pronounce like a word? What's a counter pair of what? Where without voice? What do you have? Exactly that's how we pronounce. So we don't say Arhi, Tuve. It's so hard to do that. I have to think about wow and other things. And so it's pronounced like F. And um, Name is writer. Exactly. Now you understand why in English it's transliterated like that. Oh, yeah. That's why. Because it's not always transliterated like that, but it should be. Well, sometimes all. Sometimes but they, that yeah. means if the writer or translator rely on uh, looking. If they rely on how it's pronounced, because I saw it off and I saw it this way. This one about 90%, this one about 10%. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this one very often. Bachov, whatever, or Chekhov. So you see often. So whenever that final is a uh, final word, um, final letter in uh, with, with the pronounce with the voice, my voice, v, z, z, b, g, and d, it's pronounced like it's. That's a rule. 
actually some of you do it uh, this is not crucial if you could pronounce it with a voice pronounce it it would be just uh, would be a little different than Russian do it but everybody understands but sometimes you couldn't do it so sometimes people do it naturally okay so in the same rule um, the same rule apply when the two consonants have a different origin in the middle of the word okay? for example if you have two k and k in the middle of the word so they pronounce like voices if the two g z they pronounce like with a voice however if you have a couple consonants of the different origin for example So where is the two consonants coming? The and K. So uh, is the with a voice or without? With. with. What about K? Without. Without. What can you hear when I say vodka? Vodka. What do you hear? He changed the D to a T. Exactly. So this one pronounced like So it has a word. If they have different origin, the second consonant affect this one and make it pronounce like it's counted here. So if it's without voice, this one pronounced like without voice. So we don't say vod, taha, we say vodka. Right? And you probably heard it, right? The Russians say vodka, vodka. Uh, the same thing applies, but the other way around. For example, I don't know if this 
always ever applies, but if you have multiple consonants at the end of a word, and the last one is a voiced one, but you're going to pronounce it as unvoiced, does it affect the consonant before it? Does my question make sense? Uh, you have to give me an example. We don't have many consonants, only a couple, maybe. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, uh, if it... uh, in the middle of the words, yes, we could have that. Okay. Uh, we'll wait for that. Okay. Some, some of them make it easier for you to pronounce because, you know, with all these Russian clusters, the consonants cause a lot of trouble for mm -hmm. pronunciation. But I have a good news. Some of them silent. Okay. So it's really <laughs> easier for you to pronounce. Okay, any other questions about this rule, previous rule, all this pronunciational rule? Okay, how do you say uh, in Kiev? Look at that, what it says over there. Kiev. 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 Uh -huh. Okay. Subtitles. C3, right? You see it on page 16? Basketball. Basketball, right? Because Ted is for B, it's pronounced like that. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Was zavut. Kak was zavut, right? Kak was zavut. Even in the boundaries of a couple of words, because they pronounced together, sometimes they apply. Okay. So that one, is that also work? Is that does the G change to a K at the end of? Well, it's actually your Pittsburgh, right? Like in the United States, right? And then Saint Petersburg in Russia, right? But I mean that that is the rule K? the rule for the sound oh, no. changing does it change at the end? There's two consonants next to each other. Does it change to K because it's at the end? I would pronounce it like that in Russian one. They didn't do it, but it's work. Okay. I would just do that. Unless I really try to pronounce it like in English. You know, if mm -hmm. I think about that, maybe, but otherwise, without thinking, I would make it voiceless. Okay. Without thinking. Okay, so we're really done with the, all of this introductory things. So letters and practicing, and this one, and pronunciation rule. As you see in the page 17, you have an alphabet, right? And you also have a, you know, alphabet letters in alphabetical order, and uh, if you want to use a um, Cyrillic uh, keyboarding, it's here. I also could put a couple links for you if you want to type or learn how to type. I will do that on Canvas. And uh, next time we'll start a, a new chapter. We'll review all of the things, start a new chapter, and maybe practice a little bit uh, cursive, right? slightly. At least I introduce a couple. So we get a little familiar with that. Okay, so we can do that. And uh, let's do in a couple of minutes uh, greetings. Page 23. Let's do a couple of greetings before we go. Say hello and goodbye. Mm -hmm. First of all, before we do that, can you tell me uh, in a uh, and most of the language, uh, and you know in Russian, you have a, a addressing you, formal, informal. Anybody remember how to say you in Russian? Good. Any other way to do to say it? you? You could come by T, and we. which one is informal? Singular and formal. We, formal or could be plural, all of you, right? So that's why we have a, unfortunately, the longest Russian word besides hi. Anybody know how to say hello? Hi. Okay, besides that one, simple <laughs> words. Let's start with simple words. Okay, so we have words, simple one. How do you say it? Privet. Okay. So, privet, and it means hi. But not always you could do that. You come in somebody's house, or, you know, grandparents, or you come in, uh, you know, with your boss first time, or interview, who would say that? It's a good word, but it's just like too casual, right? 
hi, whatever, you come to the interview. You can't say that. <laughs> With your friends, whatever, you could say Privet. Okay? And it has only one form, because it's formal, it's like hi, Privet, Privet. Now, however, you're right, if you wanted to say then, hello, it could be formal or informal, you have to use other words. And, unfortunately, it's one of the longest Russian words. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to... <laughs> Okay, let's do the informal first. You close the window? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Here, let's try to do this one. So, as you see, there's... Um, How many consonants do I have here in a minute? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the hardest Russian words. So how many consonants? Four. Four. Well, good news, you don't pronounce this one. It's a silent. Okay, so only three. Which one is it? Okay, so the first word okay. you do not pronounce. Okay. So, Z, D, R, A, then you don't pronounce Z, T, V, U, Y. So, Zdrastvui and Privyaz, they're synonyms. You could use it also informally, right? Zdrastvui. Hey, repeat after me. Zdrastvui. 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 One more time. Zdrastvui. 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 Yeah. So, absolutely equally. Now, if you want to address the formal to somebody, you add extra syllable to that one. Okay? Extra syllable, T. Yeah will indicate a lot of formal or plural. So the same thing. And the same is silent. Trust with you. So if I address all of you, of course it's plural. Trust with you. Well, that's what it is. Trust with you. If it's ты, здрасте, привет. If it's we, plural or formal, trust with Said, see you. Paka. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one way to say paka, and the other one, formal or informal, it's neutral. And it's, it's two words, that, but they've kind of pronounced together. Wait, are you saying that paka is neutral or this one's neutral? Or are they both neutral? The svidanya is neutral. Oh, okay. It's formal, informal, whatever. 
Pakka is kind of like pretty a Pakka. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But, so this one is pronounced a little bit kind of like together, so it's two separate words, but they pronounce The Svidania. Like, until we meet again. I'll see you later. Okay, repeat after me. Pakka. The Svidania. The Svidania. The Svidania. Dania, there's two vowels together. And since it's two vowels together, ya yeah is pronounced fully. Dania. And here the word reduced. Okay. Let's see. John, any question about this one? Which one? This is the one this? without. Okay. Drastic. Hello. Yeah, it's singular. You know, like in uh, many languages, that's why I started with the English. In many languages, they have formal and informal. Right? Like in French, Italian, Spanish. Right? Which language did you study? Well, they have also stead. They, they have. So the same thing as this one. Uh, so whenever you say hello to uh, your friend, your sister, or your classmate, or your family members, that's a form you could use. Привет or здравствуй. Okay? And you could say пока, say goodbye, right? But if you don't know the person, like person in the street, right, to address we, or a professor, or teacher and the kids, Right? Or family, your friends, family, older people, or somebody whom you don't know on the street. Then we use we, stras, we see, the svidani, right? So the svidani is kind of neutral. You could say it was your sister, close friend, or whatever formal. But the svidani is neutral. But stras, we see, with that extra syllable, it's a formal, plus it's also applied for the plural one. Like all of you. Right? So kids or students. Francis. Do you I sent everyone a message on Canvas inbox with an invite to the Discord server. Um, Come be joined. <laughs> um, but yeah, then we can then we can communicate and like if anybody has questions, we can help each other out and stuff like that.